morning and welcome to Second Chance. My name is Philip Jones. And my name is Tafaro Cook, two-time kidney transplant recipient and founder of Kidney Care Coaches, where we coach people with stage three to stage five kidney disease. If you know anybody who has those, reach out to us at kidneycarecoaches.com. Today on Let's Talk, we are talking about the nationwide study of susceptibility of patients on dialysis to COVID-19. Now, yesterday we talked about COVID-19 and the stress that nurses are seeing at this time. And so right now I wanna go into this uh, study they did in 2020 about the susceptibility of patients uh, getting COVID. And that's what they're talking about. They say patients on dialysis are known to be at notably higher risk of contracting SARS COVID-2 and dying from COVID-19 than the general population. And now for the first time, a large nationwide study pinpoints further specific risk factors for infection and mortality in this population, which in fact are broadly similar to those in the general population. So in other words, <clears throat> you're saying they're basically the same in both populations, but when you look at these stats, they're much higher with people who are at risk. And that's people who are on dialysis. Also it could be people who have kidney transplants or any other transplant. That could be a challenge also. So right here it says the study of the study population of 498,168 patients represented the entire US Medicare cohorts who received long-term dialysis in 2020. Among those 60,090 patients who developed COVID-19, 26% died. That's quite a bit, man, if you look at it. You know, among those patients that caught uh, COVID-19, 26% died? What do you think about that, Phil? 26% is a big number, especially when twenty when it's twenty percent of sixty thousand, so almost sixty one thousand people. Uh, you know, I, I know. You know, as uh, a number that's also next to the uh, overall number, it kind of looks small. But just think about that number for a second: sixty one thousand people. That is a massive amount of people. I, I, and again, I know the number looks small next to the overall number, but just the number itself, uh, especially when you look at that number and the overall number of at-risk people makes that number a lot bigger, right? Um, yeah. And to, to think that you know 26% of, of that number dies like that's that's crucial man you know um but i think that those statistics should make people think how they take care of themselves uh you know if you're at risk you're immunosuppressed and things of that nature you need to figure out anything and everything you can do to keep yourself safe um and not and and if you're one of those people you know because there are some people out there that they care more about other people than they do themselves, right? And even if you're that that person, at least be safe for that reason, you know, to be able to keep the people in your life, you know, safe. You know, as a, you know, if you don't care, I mean, that's fine not to care about it. I mean, I wish everybody would care about themselves, but you know, if you care about more about other people or your families and things like that, think of it that way. If you get sick, you put them in the position. You know, uh, um, you have to come home and live with them and things. Right, that nature. So, right. Like you said, you're putting, you, you're putting a lot of people at jeopardy. Uh, the study in 2020, uh, it said patients receiving long-term dialysis comprise 70% of uh, end-stage uh, end stage renal disease population. So understanding their SARS COVID-2 infection and mortality risk has sparked much interest. Um, 
The article also said various studies have investigated the, the impact of COVID-19 on dialysis patients regionally within specific dialysis organizations. However, there is a lack of literature on this patient population nationwide. And I agree with that. So this population is not really getting a lot of statistics because I hate to say it, but it seems like you know, people on dialysis almost get forgotten in what's going on in, in the real world. You know what I mean? That's exactly like, what it is. And that's just what they're talking about. You know, so we got a population of people who are, you know, living off a mechanism, whether it's a machine, whether it's a mechanism, the one you work, you live off of. And, you know, <clears throat> that I lived off at, at one time that's not even getting recognized and are dying off, man. So. What, what do we what do we say about this? What do we do? You know, it, this is actually something that I noticed uh, at the very beginning of COVID, right? Uh, because so many people were doing webinars of uh, you know uh, cancer and and uh, COVID, you know, co uh, cancer patients and COVID, or uh, diabetes patients and COVID, you know, and you know, or how, you know, it was these individual things and COVID, right? These individual mm -hmm. sicknesses. And what's crazy is that they don't touch on kidney disease and COVID or uh, heart disease and COVID, you know, people, transplants in general, you know, the, those recipients and COVID and was, was, was mind boggling about that is that you have these individual things that they're touching on high blood pressure, you know, diabetes, things like that, that we all know are the high, highest factors of catching kidney disease, you know, and they don't even make that connection. Um, it, it was something that I, I can tell was going to be an issue for dialysis patients, kidney patients in general, transplant patients as a whole, um, because it was it wasn't being uh paid attention to it wasn't being addressed, like you're saying. And I totally agree right. with that. It was like in our own little population, we were talking about it, but and like you said, even when you watch the modern news on you know on regular the big the, the big stations, you were talking. They were talking about cancer. They were talking about all these other you know uh, mortalities, but weren't weren't even uh, talking about um, uh, anything with kidney disease. And we have a big population out here with that. You know, let me let me read this also. It says. The median age of patients was 66 years old, and it might be because there's such a older population too. Slightly over 43% were women, and 12% received COVID-19 diagnosis during the study period. The 26% mortality rate in those who develop COVID-19 compared with a mortality rate of 16% among patients that did not. COVID-19 was associated with a higher mortality in, the, in this population. Again, just what you said, they did the stats on this. And the doctor says, you know, this was up higher. Uh, this was higher than, the, you know, 16% in the rest of the population. That's that's high, man. That, you know, that means people who uh, that do have kidney disease are, we're seeing a 16% higher rate of mortality with this. That's 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 quite a bit, man. You know, let, let me read this also. <clears throat> Interestingly, while men were not more likely to be infected with the SARS-CoV-2 than women. So again, like we see already, women get more kidney disease than men. And even women were even getting affected more with the COVID-19 uh, uh, diagnosis, man, that's, and that's a pattern that we're already talking about, you know, with this going on, man. Um, again, just like what Phil said, I just want to address, we have to stay safe. We have to, you know, take every precautionary uh, thing as far as washing your hands when you go somewhere, keeping a mask on, you know, and also avoiding places if you can, you know, you Sometimes you can't go everywhere. Sometimes you just can't go willy-nilly here and there. And then, like Phil said, 
Take consideration if you are living with somebody who has kidney disease. Take consideration if you have somebody that has a, uh, you know, a, 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 any kind of infection, anything going on with them, you know. Yeah, it's, it, you know, and, and it's not, the thing about it is that there's so much that you can do to stay safe, right? The main thing, like, like Ms. Cook just said, you know, stay home. You know, I understand some people, you know, dialysis patient or not, you know, y'all like to go out, hang with friends, you know, go to parties right. and things like that, right? But what people don't think about is this. There is two ways, and, and, and I'm going to kind of get back to kind of where exactly, but this part is important as well. Think of it two ways. Either you go out, you have a good time. And it'd be your last time having a good time because Whoa. you got a possibility of dying. Whoa. Or stay in the house, watch TV, chill, be with the family, do what you do, you know, FaceTime, Facebook, whatever. You know, if it takes a year, it takes a year. So what? At least you got multiple years to live after the fact, to be able to accomplish these things that, that you want to accomplish out in public because you're still here to do it right i mean you got you know i've, I've seen so many posts of you know oh i went out you know or, or my friend went out or a cousin or whatever uh you know top floor you know such such hotel and in this great city or whatever and it came and then you know, a day or so later, or they in a hospital with COVID on the ventilator. Well, how much sense does that make? You know, I went out to have fun and I came back and now I'm stuck, can't breathe them all. You know, do, do you know? Um, do you know? Like in China, when when it first started, they shut everything down. Like, won't nobody do nothing, and they don't have it now. Well, us is immediately, immediately, immediately. They shut it down and, immediately. And and it, you know when you know when I first seen that I was like, dang, they shut down everything. Well, they had a they had a recipe. They shut down everything to know that right now everybody can go out and do what they want to do. Yeah, they're wearing masks and things like that, but their population is two or three times more than ours, and they shut down everything. Where to the point where if you were on the streets at night, you're going to jail. You know that's how they did it, and they meant business when they did it. What do you think if we would have done that? Do you think we would have had the same outcome or somewhere close to it? Been saying that from day one, man. Uh, they shut down in January, right? Shut down in January. Way two Can months we, before we even thought about it. 2020, right? Yeah, 2020. Shut it down January, right? Because, see, what I found out was that the the first case actually popped up in December. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so they, when, when they kind of got uh, attached to the, uh, the, the pandemic, um, you know, it kind of, again, it started like around January time. They shut all that down. That's why, that's why they were able to make that transition into this time so much easier and quicker. Right. You started seeing, you know, if, I mean, you're, you're a sports person, so you watch ESPN sometimes, too. And if you notice, nobody in stands of sporting events, mask on during the event. They were playing baseball with masks on. You know, that was one of the first sports that came back uh, once they started bringing back sports with no fans and stuff. They were out there playing baseball with masks on, right, and, and making it and making it work. I mean, at the, what's – What's the difference between baseball with mask on and baseball without mask on? It ain't going to make a difference. Though. You and I talked about the, out, it, the, uh, the the New Year's Day games la last week and everything. We talked, you know, you and I talked about the uh, Rose Bowl. We talked about all the Fiesta Bowl, Cotton Bowl, whatever we talked about. If you looked out in the mm. stands, hundreds of thousands of people in both areas, uh, I didn't see too many masks on at all. And these are what we call these – super, you know, super, whatever they call super conductors or whatever, super spreaders, I'm sorry, super spreaders. And nobody had no mask on. And let me tell you, 
with these with these bowl games, and I ain't against football. You know, I love some football, but with these bowl games, we have people coming in from everywhere, and then they go out everywhere. They get these airports and everything, and we will see that effect probably next week or the week after of what went down then with the bowl games and everything. And uh, I don't know, man. I don't, know. Man, I don't want to be a heavy downer, but shit. We're seeing a um, – and I, and I don't know how high or low the spike is. I just know that there is a spike just off of Christmas dinner. Man, two, three days after Christmas night, man, every place I went past, drove past, that offered COVID-19 testing, the line was – down the street and around the corner because that's funny that you say that. Well, I'm like, so if it, so, to go back to your your statement about the bowl game, if there are people who are scared or just or getting sick off of Christmas dinner, a dinner that nine times out of ten has ten maybe fifteen people uh, in a yeah, house at one time. Yeah, yeah. What right. do you think gonna happen to? Fifty to a hundred thousand people in a in an enclosed arena, uh, you know, and, and I say fifty to that because it depends on uh, course, no course, mass, no course, nothing, course, no nothing. Course, stadium, this. right? With no man. And here's the thing: I could understand the nomad if you're eating, right? They everybody have made this uh, part of the rule, you know. If you eat, of course, you know, because you can't eat with a mask over your face. That's just it's just an impossibility. It's not going to happen. Um, but there's no reason everyone is eating at the same time where they mask it down. Again, I can understand it if you're eating. If you're not eating, you're done, you hadn't started with that, put your mask on. It takes all a half a second to go. Phil, no but you time, know what, though? Phil, do, do you know what, though? I keep it real with you, man. I, I wear my mask, and I know you do, because, we, you know, we're, we're, you know, is what we do, but I can imagine. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, mine is right here somewhere. I got a couple of them laying around. But it's getting fatigued. That's why. That's what I'm talking about. It's it's, it's COVID fatigue when you got to wear a mask all the time. You got to do this again. If we would have adopted that principle, what China did earlier, who knows? I'm not saying it would have cured all of America, but maybe there's a good possibility. And I'd like to see a stat if what would have happened in America if somebody did the stats on that, how would it had, uh, you know, decreased the, the, the load of, of this COVID-19? You know what I'm saying? But what you said was real big. If, you know, you said you go down the street and there's, there's tents set up everywhere. My buddy was just in Fort Lauderdale. And he said, man, they got tents all over the place, just set up everywhere. For, and the lines are lines as long as heck. And, they're not yes. saying too much right now where, you know, everybody I know, there, there's people I know that work in the hospitals and stuff right now. They have to max right now, bro. And, I, and another thing, just like I told my wife, I was like, they're not really saying too much, but if you were to get COVID-19 right now and you had a, a underlying uh, cause of something else like we do, can you get the care? Let's ask that question. Is there? Is, 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 can we get the care when we see the stress load of dialysis nurses already at the you know point where they're uh, li literally walking off the job? Like I quit because because now we're starting to affect the healthcare's health. The healthcare people we're we're affecting their health now. With that being said, the hospitals are are at their capacity right now. So I don't know how you can even get good health. You know what I'm saying? Health care while you're going through these. You know, th that's another question. This is, I never would have thought this would take this long. When it first happened in 20, I remember that one of the doctors said, we're going to be here till the fall. I was like, the fall? Because we were talking about this like a month or so. In Columbus, Ohio right now, they got people going, they got mm -hmm. kids not going to school no more. They're going right back home doing the home thing. Is that going to happen all over the country again? I think it would have been smarter to wait. Now, granted, I've been waiting on an in-person graduation for about seem like thirty-five years already. But I don't think that's going to happen. Um, it's the, and and 
as sad as I probably would be because, I mean, you know what, what we go through as kidney patients. And I don't say I because I'm not the only person who's ever had a transplant that's going to school, to, you know, and want to graduate. But, um, you know, when, when you go through what we go through and then you set out for an accomplishment and you're expecting the the correct celebration of that achievement, you know, and you don't and you don't get it. I mean, you know, as small as it is, is very. I get big, it. I get it. Right. Um, but to answer your question, I think we will get that care, and and I tell you this off of experience. Um, you know, I have been in emergency and admitted. It, um, you know, a, a whole lot less times than than what I was used to having to go in for uh, some years ago. But I have been in uh, a medical facility uh, to be taken care of as a kidney patient, you know, a couple of times between uh, the beginning of last year, uh, well, not last year, the beginning of 2020, uh, when everything started up until this point. And I think that was probably the, the times that I've been seeing, and, and I've been in for some crazy reasons right health wise uh before covid but smaller things that i've been in for during covid and they fast tracked and pushed me through to get me in there you know uh and the thing was the only thing that was scary was this part so if you've been in a, in a medical facility recently you know that most emergency rooms and hospitals have cut off the hospital at a point where this part of the hospital is for COVID patients. This part of the hospital are is for non-COVID patients, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I've been on both sides of it. So I've seen uh, the speed in which they work. You know, if they think you have COVID or, you know, you're not, you don't have COVID. And I think the only problem that I have with that is in a situation where I'm here, here for, for symptoms that aren't even close to being COVID related and you put me in a COVID uh, area anyways and I get wow. why they do it. They get it to be precautious in case, you know, the, the symptoms aren't seeable yet but I have it, right? Which I get and I'm fine with that. I agree with that. I, I agree with your decision making in that aspect but when you're a person like me that can catch it a lot quicker than everybody else just going through the area which COVID can lie is a problem for us, right? So yeah, I've been only, in this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I will say not only catch it, but the outcome of you, you know, getting it out, you know, any of us, the outcome of, of um, you know, receiving care and, and your recovery is going to be a little bit challenging more than anybody else. Yeah, I, I I had a scare once, man, when I was in during this COVID thing, and uh, I was in an area. I had been tested for COVID, right? I, they didn't. It wasn't um, uh, a reading hadn't come. This was before they had, you know, started getting all these rapid tests done and stuff like that. And so, you know, you had to wait till the next day to get your yeah. results. And so, um, I remember I was in. I was admitted in the hospital, I was on the floor. And I remember the nurse came in there and, and it's funny because I laughed at her when she ran in there and I said, you look like a crackhead that just consumed some crack right now. What is wrong with you? And she said, she said, we got to get you out of here. And I said, well, what's the problem? And she said, you tested negative. But that's not the same thing as the two people that's on the side of you. Oh, freak. Wow. So I had one person in the room on this end. And, you know, of course, you know, uh, when you're in a floor, most rooms in certain on certain floors, they're all private rooms. So it's okay. only one person that can go in there. So we we're in those kind of rooms. But this room and this room had people who were both that just tested positive for COVID. Right. Well one side did and the other one was in the process of getting results back and we found out 
I think right before they had moved me out that it did that 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 uh patient did test positive for it, right? So they were, you know, once they saw my negative results come back, they're moving rapidly to get me out of there into a floor with non non-COVID patients. Right. They went the non-COVID elevator, non-COVID floor to the non-COVID room. And you know, so I do think that they, if nothing else, right, they do have in place ways to take care of patients in general that are immune suppressed uh, to be able to take care of them in this situation. Now, do I think that they need to, uh, I don't want to say this like, like separate, but individualize these illnesses and figure out the 100% proper way to go uh, because I think that every sickness to have its own um, what's where I'm looking for protocol in ways that they go about taking care of patients, right? So somebody with patients protocol might be different. Somebody with kidney disease, somebody with kidney disease protocol might be different. Somebody with heart disease, you know, it needs to be uh, separate protocols figured out. Now, if you can go with the same protocols for all these for you know uh, transplant patients, great. But there needs to be some kind of protocol. It's never going to work. It's never going to work like that because again, all of us are different. All of us got different challenges. The people who got kidney disease, they might have got it from something else. So, you know, the, diabetes, high blood pressure. Yeah, the, the list goes on. There, there was another study I, you and I talked about was. Um, the obesity that that right the um the 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 kid the um the COVID nineteen is when people who are obese is sitting in the the fat and you know I read a study about that so um just wanted to set, tell everybody before we get off um, stay safe use precaution use your mask wash your hands use sanitizer all those things okay. If you don't have to go somewhere, keep your tail at home. That's all I got to say. Go ahead, Phil. Uh, yeah, and to, to piggyback real quick off of the obesity thing, it doesn't take much for you to get active. You know, get active. This is actually a perfect time to get active. It really is. Uh, really, you know, uh, and you can be active anywhere. Walk up and down your street, of course, with a mask on. You know, if you have a backyard, you know, do some activities in the backyard, play with kids, you know, walk. If you got to walk for three hours in your backyard in a complete circle, then you do that. But then you have people have to start getting active. I try to walk somewhere at the least five times, five times a week. Right. right. At least once for about 30, 40 minutes. I try to find even if I go to the store four to five times in a week. You know, that's still getting in some type of, of walking activity. I'm I've done it now. This is gonna sound crazy, but I've done it just to get that part of my life uh done, which is walking, you know, in the day. I've gone to the store and picked up three things in the store, and it took me 30 minutes just because I want to walk around. Yeah, yeah. But it was hot outside, so that was my way of being cool and get my exercise in, right? right. There are a billion, you can go get light weights, you know, to, and, and work out at push ups, sit ups, walking, walking in place, find and push away from the table, table sometimes, too. <laughs> you said what? Push away from the table sometimes. Right. Anything that's keeping your body active and moving consistently and, and getting these consistent reps in and working is something. And like I always say, the hardest thing to do is to start. You know, if you start now, by the time we even 2% get, you know, further from this pandemic, uh, you'll be closer to being able to go into the gym to get more walking on the treadmill or, you know, get on the bike or, you know, uh, I know Planet Fitness has a number of things that can help with your body that don't even involve really, you know, they got, they have. Uh, certain machines you you know go sit on and, and you know it's relaxing and things like that so there's a number of things that you can do 
to get active on the exercise level, right? The other thing is staying safe. Like Mr. Cook said, do what you have to do, not only to keep yourself safe, but keep your family safe, keep your friends safe, you know, uh, things of that nature. Um, we go to Costco and the first thing my dad go, walk, does when he comes in the house is spray stuff down with Lysol and wipe it down, right? There's not too much that you can do to stay safe. That's true. Uh, so do what you need to do to put yourself in a safe environment, in a healthy environment to be able to, you know, continue living. You know, man, Mr. Cook says this a number of times, man, on the show. Quality of life is important. There's no reason for you to just be here just to be here taking up space, right? Be here and be able to um, add to the world and be able to live and have a great life while you're breathing, not just, you know, looking like a vegetable laying up in a hospital bed somewhere or, or your own bed or whatever, um, you know, quality. And he's correcting me on a number of occasions with that. And, and he's right. You know, not just living, but you want to have a great quality of life. You want to be able to, when, you, when God says come home or, or whatever high power you believe in, uh, you know, you want that person to be able to say you did a great job while you were there, right? You don't want it to just be like, man, I could get that life to Joe Blow down the street that was a crackhead and he would have lived a better, better life than what you did, right? You don't want that, you know? You want people to celebrate you and be, you know, and things of that nature. So get active, get healthy, get safe. Those, those are those are those three words that I'm in, those phrases I'm in with today, um, you know, because it's important. So uh, we love you. We appreciate you, whether you're watching uh, live today or in the future. Um, you know, we appreciate your support and your love. Uh, we'll always be here. We ain't going nowhere, at least until, you know, we just can't do it no more, which would be a long time from now. Um, so. And we'll see you uh, again, hopefully, tomorrow morning, um, uh, the 7th of January. Um, if not, then it might be in the in afternoon time or something like that. But we will be here. This is a Monday through Friday thing here. Let's talk. We're going to get all this information and, and these wonderful words to you, encouragement and, and ways to keep you going throughout the day and throughout the week and out your life. So, again, we love you. We appreciate you. And we will see you tomorrow.